going to And I get inside my head sometimes Pause on the street and you eyes on me, yeah Got me feeling so good that it's hard to leave, yeah from uh, various places, I'm sure, in Manitoba, on vacation or at the cabin. We're so glad to have online services in the summer. We're glad you're here. We've got a great service planned to you. We're kicking off a new series today called Hearing God. And we hope that you hear from wherever you're watching from. Uh, we're a church in Winnipeg, uh, Canada. And if you're in this Winnipeg area, we'd love to see you on a Sunday morning. We've got great environments for your kids. Also, great environments during the week for students at a number of times and places uh, here at around the church. And um, great resources, though, today for you this morning. There's an online host that is probably saying hi to you now as I'm mentioning them. Uh, they can pray for you. There's also great resources online to go uh, further and take next steps in following Jesus wherever you're at. And if we can help with that, we'd love to be a part of that. So um, we're going to see you in just a few moments right here from the main stage. you got a moment before we begin. So welcome, get settled, and I hope you dive right in from wherever you're watching from. I'll let the moment get the best of me. Can you feel my nervous energy? I don't always get myself away. If you would call me on a different day, I'll let the moment get the best of me. Can you feel my nervous energy? Well, hey, good morning. Welcome to Oasis. Happy Sunday. My name's Dustin. If I haven't met you yet, I just want to say welcome to all of you, all of you that are here with us in the room. Welcome to those of you watching online this summer Sunday. We have a great service planned. If you're new here, you're wondering what to expect, we're going to be here for about an hour. And this Sunday, we're kicking off a new uh, collection of messages called Hearing God. And um, this is all about, does God still speak today? It, it, so how do we hear him? How do, how do we get more of that if if, if he does. And so one of our pastors, Wesley, is going to be up about halfway through the service to speak about one of the primary ways that God speaks to us, and that's through prayer. Um, a few other notes about things going on around here. One of them is just our next steps. We talk about this every week because these, we feel, are essential habits of people who are deciding to follow Jesus. Jesus, uh, it doesn't matter if you, if you followed him for like a week or you followed him your whole life. Uh, two things that he talked about so often. One of them was using the giftings, the abilities, the talents that he's put in our life. The way that happens around our church is serving teams. And also the other thing is community. That as followers of Jesus, we need other people. We need to do this together. And if that's something that you're interested in, either of those life groups is the, and serving teams are the way we practice those at our church. If you want to reach out to us online or talk to someone at guest services today, we'd love to answer some of the questions you have, maybe help you take these next steps. Um, these are things that we think never go away as we follow Jesus. We need some form of this in our life. So let us know if that's of interest to you. Um, today, uh, we've got a great band here to lead us. We've got Sherry and Josh and Lauren and Jeff here to lead us in some singing. We're going to start off some songs that talk about praising God and, and just taking the attention off ourselves and putting it on to Him. It's an incredible invitation. Um, the book of Psalms in the Bible is kind of in the prayer book of God's people for thousands and thousands of years. And there's all kinds of prayers in it. There's prayers when you're angry at God, prayers when we're afraid, prayers when we're disappointed with God, when we're sad. Um, but you get to the end of the book of Psalms and it's like all praise. The last number of Psalms are just praise. Uh, praise God in the sanctuary, praise Him in the fields, praise Him with the guitar, praise Him with the drums. And a lot of theologians think that the book is set up like this because it's telling us if we pray long enough, if we pray properly, if we pray through all our fears and disappointment, all of our prayers end in praise. 
Praise to a God who holds our life in his hand. Praise to a God who does all things well. He's even powerful enough to take the evil of this world and work it for good in our lives. And when we praise now, we're, we're praising God in the middle of the mystery. We're praising him ahead of time and giving him praise for what he has done. We serve a God who has already died for us on the cross, risen from the grave to give us hope. And even if he does another, uh, never does another thing for us the rest of our lives, we can still worship him with all we have because of what he's done. And so let's use these songs as an opportunity to do that. I'm going to invite you to stand and join the band as they lead us. song is such a good reminder of why we're here, that we're here to focus on God, to align our lives with Him, to be open to His influence. And so would you sing this with us as we declare it together? Let our praise be your welcome. Let our souls be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down, and let us shine. Oh
us. He won't forsake them. And blessed are those who seek His face, who bend the knee and fix a gaze on Jesus. They won't be shaken. Dustin and I recently got back from Malawi where we were visiting uh, Village of Hope, which is our partner orga organization there uh, with an Oasis team of people. And uh, 
As you walk around the community where Village of Hope is located, you see many stands like this one. I've got a photo. Uh, stands with little portions of beans, of lentils, of cooking oil, of rice. Uh, these are daily portions. And these stands serve a society where many can only afford a day's worth of resources. And maybe many can only afford a day's worth of resources every few days. You contrast that to Canada, where people maybe shop for a week's worth of food, and still we have stores in our basements, in our pantries, in our freezer, and still after that, we would have money in the bank. That This kind of life seems hard to imagine. And we value our ability to sustain ourselves, our independence, but we also take it for granted. That am I as grateful for my portion of rice at dinner as my friends in Malawi? Probably not. And maybe it's easier to remember this, uh, maybe it's easier to remember where it all comes from when you have to ask every day, is it coming? And sometimes I think that we might see more clearly how dependent we are on God if we weren't so independent ourselves, if all our stuff was just cleared out of the way. And it seems harder to surrender sometimes when you actually have stuff to surrender. But Jesus said that real life is found not in getting more, but in giving it away. And Jesus didn't just say this, but he lived it. That this is the Jesus we serve. This is the Jesus we worship. This is the Jesus that we follow. This is the Jesus we surrender to. The one who lived this by example. And he washed the feet of his followers. He loved those who hated him. And he ultimately died for all of us. And when that becomes clear to us, that he's both this example we follow and that he has done this himself for us, that it maybe helps us loosen our grip just a little bit. And when we realize who God is and embrace what he has done, that we should live our entire lives in response to that. And now we have a chance to sing about all these things in the next couple songs. So I'm gonna enjoy, I'm gonna invite you to join us as we sing this together. All to Jesus I surrender all to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender Would 
such a leper skin Open his arms to let the outcast in Respond with mercy in the face of sin Jesus, no one is like you Lord Jesus, we just want to praise you as you are a king like no other. You're all powerful and uh, everything's known to you and yet our lives matter to you at the same time. You're transcendent but you're near to us and, and those are things that are just too wonderful for us to grasp at times and so we praise you for all the care you've shown us. We confess our sins that are, are just so often weighing us down and destroying this life you've given us. We confess how much we need a savior. And so we say thank you for your work. Thank you for dying for us. Help us, we pray, by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us to just believe in this forgiveness that's been given to us, to follow you, to do your work in this world by the power you've given us that lives inside us. 
now as we, we turn our attention to um, the Bible in just a few moments, you give us ears to hear. Give us a heart that's open, that's ready to receive. And then just the humility to follow you and the courage to follow through on what you're asking of us today. We thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for your singing. You can be seated. Well, uh, we, we talked earlier in the service about next steps, which are super essential. And there's another next step that's required of everyone who follows Jesus, and that's uh, baptism. Baptism is something that Jesus said would be uh, something all of his followers would do. And it's this symbol that says, I am a follower of Jesus. I don't care who knows about it. And it's kind of this weird object lesson, right? This symbol where, more than an object lesson, symbol where you, you're take someone, they're put under the water, and they come up out of the water, and it's far from random. It's the symbol that says, just as I go under the water, just as Jesus was taken from the cross and was buried, I'm dying to an old way of life where I was number one. As we come up out of the water, it's a symbol that says, I'm raised by the power of Christ's resurrection into new life. His Holy Spirit's been put in me. I'm following a new leader. And this is something that's been asked of all of us. It's actually more than asked. It's been commanded of us who follow Jesus. And we practice this in a few ways at our church. One of them is coming up again on September 29th, following the service in our courtyard. That's kind of in between the two buildings on site here. Uh, we, we're going to have an outdoor baptism. And so it's a little more of a casual way to express this, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, the other way, kind of the primary way, is in our services here. And we help you craft your, ser- your story that we show by video, that you're able to share by video. And it's just incredible the power of our work words as we t- share our story following Jesus. It says in the book of Revelation that we, we overcome this world by the blood of the lamb, the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, but also the word of our testimony. And it's something we're, we're called to do as followers of Jesus, to just share and witness to what he has done for us. And so if you're interested in either of those options, if you want to uh, let us know online, or you can talk to people at guest services today, or check out a portion of our website that has a lot of frequently asked questions. It's all there. We'd love to celebrate with you. So let us know if that's something we can do. Uh, right now, we have a chance to give back to God. And if you're a guest, please don't feel obligated to participate in this part of the service. But if you call Oasis home, I just want to say thanks for your generosity and thanks for your giving. It's making an incredible difference. This past year, we've celebrated, this past 12 months, we've celebrated with 73 people as they've been baptized and just uh, said that I'm following Jesus. And if you give, you are a part of every one of those stories of life chains. It's really a small picture of what we're about as a church. And our church is fully, uh, is 100% supported by the generosity of people whose lives are affected by our ministry. It's, it's how we, we go as far as our, our giving um, and God's power allows us to go. So I just want to say thanks to so many of you who sacrifice, you say no to other things so this church can reach its potential. And there's a number of ways you can give. There's giving boxes in the back of the auditorium as you leave. There's uh, giving stations in the hallway. And uh, we're going to give a slide to here in a moment on the screens that shows just ways you can give uh, digitally through, through the internet, your phone. So Huge thanks in advance for those of you who give, and you're part of all these life changed here at Oasis. Thanks. starting a new series today called Hearing God, and right off the bat, that may just seem kind of weird to you, isn't it? Like, like, how do we hear from God? Like, how do we hear from somebody or something that is essentially invisible? Like, it, that just may seem kind of strange. 
Now, for me, you know, I've been a Christian for most of my life, and now one thing I've learned over the years is that when I look back on my life and my journey in life, where I can honestly say, we're like, yeah, you know what? I have heard from God in numerous ways in different times. And, and you know, I, and let me be clear, I've never heard an audible voice from God. Um, I wouldn't put that past him. And, and if I did hear his voice, I assume he sounds like Morgan Freeman. I don't know. Um, but the older I get, uh, something that I've learned, and it's this, is that in order for me, in order for me to get the life that I ultimately want and make the decisions that I would ultimately want to make, whether it's in my relationships, my marriage, my parenting, my finances, um, in order for me to, uh, um, how to know how to lead others well in this church and really essentially what my next step is in life, I don't want to make those decisions on my own. Because I'm really, I'm not, I don't think I'm smart enough. I, I need help in this area. Because this is what I know about me. When Wes is hearing from Wes, when Wes is making all the decisions, I, I can screw it up pretty quickly. Like, I, I can hit a dead end pretty quickly. However, when I live my life and I make myself available to hear from God and, and try to do the things that He wants me to do, it kind of feels like there's this momentum there where it's like, there's this like, yes, okay, this is what I think I'm, I'm supposed to do. This is, this, is the, this, is, this is where I think I should be right now. Now, am I 100% sure? No but it feels like I'm on the right path. So as we're starting the series today, and we're going to look at the next couple of weeks, the different ways that we can hear from God. Because I think there's, God can speak to us in numerous ways. He can speak to us through, through Scripture, through the Bible, through music, through nature, through people, through experiences. But for today, I want to talk about what I think is, what I think is probably the most personal way to hear from God. And I think the most personal way to hear from God is through prayer. Now, some of you see this now, and you maybe sigh a little bit. You're like, oh. And, and you do that because you know this isn't a strong suit for you. You know you struggle with this. And especially for a lot of us who grew up in church, and maybe we've been taught, or you, you had a dad or a grandpa that used to say to you, it's like, you know what, there's power in prayer. And you know this, and you've learned this, but you're not so sure sometimes. And maybe you're thinking, it's like, well, maybe my frequency is enough, or maybe I'm not doing it, I, I, I don't do it a lot, or I'm not sure I'm saying the right things or doing the right things. So if that's you today and you struggle with this, listen, you are in good company. Because if you look at the life, uh, the four accounts of Jesus' life, that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, we, you notice that we only have one recorded thing from those Gospels where Jesus' disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Jesus, can you teach us something? Now think about that for a second. There's only one time that we know about where Jesus' disciples said to them, hey Jesus, can you teach us this? Now, if you had one shot at asking Jesus something, what would you ask him to teach you? I, I think I'd be like, hey, Jesus, can you teach me to walk on water? Like, that would be so awesome. Some of you are like, hey, Jesus, teach me to turn water into wine. But well, there's only one recorded thing where Jesus, where Jesus' disciples, they, they must have been struggling with this. And it's like, hey, Jesus, can you teach us this? And this is how it starts off. It says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. So Jesus was praying in a certain place. We don't know where he was. We don't even know what he was praying about. But apparently his disciples must have been close because they must have heard and saw what, how Jesus was praying. And then it says, it says, when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, this is actually a very weird request. And let, weird, weird request, and let me tell you why. Because if you know anything about Jewish history, every one of Jesus' disciples would have grown up in a Jewish home, and they all would have been taught at a very young age to learn how to pray. They would have been taught exactly how to pray. They would have been taught these, these prayers, these scripted prayers that they would have had, one of them being uh, called the Shema. It was a prayer from Deuteronomy that they would have had to um, memorize, and they would have said this every single day. So all of them ha had been taught their entire lives how to pray. So now they're asking Jesus, they're like, Jesus, teach us something we've learned our whole lives. But the question is, why? Why would they be asking Jesus this? Well, the only explanation I can think of is when they saw Jesus praying, when they heard Jesus praying, it must have been something so different than what they were used to. When they, when they heard Jesus praying, when they saw Jesus praying, he was he was. He was communicating with God like they had never seen before. When they heard Jesus praying, they, they saw something so different. It's kind of like Jesus knew just what to do. And I think, I think we can relate to the disciples here because for many of us, whether you grew up in church or maybe not, but maybe all you knew about prayer was just, just scripted prayers as well. 
where, you know, I'll, my sisters and I, when, when we were young, we sat down at the dinner table, and we had this one, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, amen. And I know some of you will know this one too, but I, I had to learn one in German. Um, I don't know what I was saying. I assumed I was being thankful for dinner. I have no idea. And also when he went to bed, my mom taught me this one when I was like four years old. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to... What? Like that... Like looking back now, that was a creepy prayer. That was scary. (laughs) And I think for a lot of us, this is what we know of prayer. We have these scripted prayers, these liturgical prayers. And listen, there's not... There's... um, there's, there's nothing wrong with scripted prayers. Scripted prayers are wonderful things. We, we read them here all the time. There's so much meaning packed in the writing of those. But don't miss my point. If you just had these scripted prayers all throughout your upbringing, did we really learn how to pray? Okay, imagine if you had, take the people that are closest to you, whether it's your spouse or your kids or the, your best friend. Can you imagine if you said the same five scripted lines to them every day? Like, where would that relationship go? If I said the same lines to my wife every day, Janie would tell me like I was a robot. And here they see Jesus, and the way he was praying, it, it wasn't it wasn't rigid, it wasn't scripted. But what it was, though, it was relational. See, that's what prayer is. It's 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 a it, it, that's what prayer is. It's talking to God. It's talking to God, but and listening to God. So if we're gonna learn how to pray while we, uh, if we're going to learn how to pray by, with listening to God, then we're going to have to take a cue from Jesus as Jesus uh, tells them what to do. And in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus starts off by saying something that is so simple, but I don't want us to gloss over that. And this is what Jesus says first. He says, and when you pray. In other words, not if you pray, but it's when you pray. There's like this, this assumption by Jesus that we pray on a regular basis because prayer isn't optional if in the life of a Christian. It's a necessity, and Jesus modeled this for us. This is what Luke tells us. He, tells, he said that, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places, and he prayed. He prayed regularly. He, he prayed daily. He prayed, he prayed these scheduled prayers that he had in his life. So the first thing we learned right off the bat from Jesus is this, is that we start praying regularly. Not just spontaneous, but scheduled. And because, when do many of us, if, if we pray at all, when do many of us just pray? Or when's the only time that we maybe will throw a prayer, prayer in the air? It's when we're in trouble. And we're, where we kind of go like, okay, God, I'm in a mess that I've made. And, okay, I probably wouldn't be here in the first place had I prayed to you first, but can you get me out of this mess now? And looking back at my, my young years, uh, I think the only time I actually prayed is when uh, I remember uh, when I had a test the day, next day and I wasn't, didn't really pray for it and I wasn't prepared. I'm like, God, can you get me out of this mess? Uh, but, and listen, don't ever shy away from praying to God when you're in a mess. God wants us all the time to go to him in prayer when we're in a mess. So never shy away uh, to going to God from a, uh, uh, when you're in a mess. But, but don't miss the point. The point is here is not just to pray spontaneously, but pray on a regular basis basis. Um, I, um, I used to pray when I was a kid sometimes, and, uh, and, and I, when I look back on all those prayers, I'm thinking, wait a second, I just needed something in this very moment. And looking back on that, man, man it's hard to get to know somebody when you're, you're praying. It's hard to get to know somebody when the only time you reach out was when you're in need or you're in a mess. So no, what we do, we schedule a time. We make an appointment. And for me, that, for me, the works best. As soon as I get up in the morning, I grab a coffee and I go find a quiet space. And I read my Bible and I pray and I meditate and I try to listen for God. Because listen, because don't most of us here, we all have calendars and we all have schedules and appointments and you have meetings uh, on a weekly basis and you have coffee meetings and you have work meetings with people you don't even like. Why wouldn't you schedule a, a, an appointment to meet with the God of the universe who is desperate to talk to you? And I think when you do schedule these things, for me, I think the best time to, to pray and to listen to God is right after I read scripture, where I, I read a portion of scripture and then I meditate on it and I think what God wants to have, um, have for me uh, in, in those moments. So we pray on a regular basis. Now some of you may be thinking, it's like, okay, well, yeah, you're right. This is what I need to do. I need to get better at this. I'm going to do this. But still, I'm not sure I know how. 
I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. I'm not sure if I'm saying the right things. I don't, I'm not sure what to do. Hey, and if that's you today, Jesus addresses that very next thing, and this is what he says next. He says, this then is how you should pray. And in the next five verses, Jesus gives his disciples, and he gives us what we know as the Lord's Prayer. 47 Greek words. And I think it's the most powerful example of you and I to pray. Powerful example of prayer in the Bible coming from Jesus. Now, I grew up, in, uh, going to, I grew up here in Winnipeg. I grew up going to public school. So from my kindergarten to grade six years, uh, every day before school started over the intercom, I heard three things. We, I heard, O Canada, I heard, God save the Queen, and I heard the Lord's Prayer. So according to my calculations, I heard the Lord's Prayer 1,372 times. So I easily had it memorized. But just because I had it memorized, I didn't actually know what it meant or what it was for. And when Jesus gave us this prayer, and gave his disciples this prayer, he didn't mean for us to recite it over and over and over again. And if you do, that's great. There's a time for that. But he didn't mean for us to be a word-for-word script. And let me tell you why. Let's read this line again. It says... This, then, is how you should pray. This, it's not what you should pray, but it's how you should pray. In other words, the Lord's Prayer is not a word-for-word script, but it's a framework. It's a framework that you and I can use. So today, for our time together, I want to unpack the Lord's Prayer, and I want to simplify it for you, and I want to give you a structure and a framework that you can use, and I want to give it to you in three parts. Because I think there's, there's basically there's a basic three parts to the Lord's Prayer, and if you change the way, if you, if you use this, it'll change the way you pray and how you can hear from God. And today, I'm going to give you a simple acronym. I know there's other acronyms out there when it comes to prayer, and those are all good too, but today I want to keep it really, really simple for all of us. And I'm going to give you the letters D-S-A. Three letters. And I'm going to tell you what they are, then we're going to walk through them together. The first one is this. First thing we do is we declare who God is. And the second thing is we surrender your, you surrender your will to God's. And then we ask for what you need. This is a simple framework to praying the Lord's Prayer, the same prayer that Jesus taught, taught, taught his disciples to tell us. And now, when you look at these three things right here, which one do you mostly think of when you think of prayer? I think for a lot of us, it's this one right here. It's just like we just, we just, we just say, hey God, I need some stuff. It's like, it's like we walk right into God's office and we're like, gimme, 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 gimme. And like, how many, how many of you as parents when, um, when your kid runs up to you and they're like, gimme, 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 how much do you think they want to hear from you in that moment? And, and no good parent doesn't want to give their kids what they want and, and then some yet. And I think it's the same thing. It's hard for, for our kids to hear from us when they're saying, gimme, gimme, gimme. So I think what Jesus is saying here, we start with a framework to, in order for us to hear from God instead of jumping to all the asks. And as we go through this, I want to give you like the big idea for today. If you can only remember one thing today, I hope it's this. And this is what prayer is, really. Prayer isn't about asking God to do our will. It's about God aligning us so we can do his. Prayer, it's not about asking God to do our will, but it's about God aligning us so we can do his. What's prayer? A prayer is not just about us asking for things and just the stuff that we want, but it's, no, it's aligning, it's, it's, it's allowing God to align us to do his will because that's always going to be better. So the first thing we're going to look at, what Jesus tells us to do first, is says we're going to declare. And the first thing he says in this prayer, he says, he says, our Father in heaven. Now Jesus right here, he starts off with probably one of the most revolutionary things in Scripture. What do you have to understand with um, he starts off by telling his disciples to address God as Father. And what you have to understand with, for his disciples, this would have been unheard of. This would have been astounding. Because when Jesus said this, never once in Scripture, never once in Jewish history had anybody ever called God their Father. And the specific word that Jesus used for, for Father was this Aramaic word called Abba. And it's, it's harder to translate in the English language, but the closest thing we have to this word, it would be the word like daddy. Like, like the most endearing term for a father. And the word father does show up about 14 times in the Old Testament, but never once, never once did it ever uh, refer to God as a father. 
um, New Testament theologian, Joachim Jeremiah, he said this about this. He said, there is not a single example of the use of Abba as an address to God in the whole Jewish literature. Yet, at the very beginning of Jesus' prayer that he teaches them, he tells them to address God as a father. Like, why is this so important? Because something changed. Something changed. What changed? Well, Jesus changed. Jesus changed everything. Where Jesus comes into your life, this is what happens. When Jesus comes into your life, it says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Like, this is amazing. When we give our lives to God, when we accept him and believe in his name, believe in his son, we have the right to be called children of God. And this is what Paul said. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. When God sent his son to die for us, it changed our relationship with him forever. And we are now reconciled with him and our sins are forgiven. So let me ask you, when you pray, do you see God as a perfect heavenly father? I think for many of us, the answer is just no. And I think the reason is why is because just how we view God. We we, we see, some of us see God as a dictator or somebody who's just, who's angry and he looks like Gandalf or he's angry like Zeus. And uh, I used to work with a guy way back in construction and uh, every once in a while I'd invite him to church. And he would always say the same thing. It's like, I I can't walk into that church. Like, I'll I'll be struck by lightning. And I wish I could tell him, it's like, listen, if you only understood how much God loves you, you have such a misunderstanding of who God is, especially as the Father. And what I learned about that situation is, I think, is the same issue that a lot of of us have have who have difficulty calling God our Father. And the issue is, our earthly father. Because many of you, you've had a tough relationship with your dads. And this, this what you know of, of, of your earthly father, it has affected your view of your heavenly father. You know, even for me, you know, I, I had a good dad and he treated us well, but even still, I didn't get to know him really well before he died. It, we just had a very more of a surface relationship. I didn't get to know him well. So it took me, like, uh, like I had to learn over the years. And something I want to say to you, it, it's this, is that you're, your heavenly father is nothing like your earthly father. And now I have three boys at home now, and I think they think I'm a good dad. At least I hope they think I'm a good dad. But I, something I have to tell them is like, guys, I am nothing like your heavenly father because I'm going to let you down. I don't want to, but I, I, just because of who I am, I'm going to let you down. So all of us, whether you're in this room or you're watching online, that we need to go beyond this idea to compare our heavenly father to our earthly father. Because if we don't believe that we have a good, perfect father, it's going to be really hard for us to hear from him, isn't it? Because if you had a rough relationship with your mom or dad, were you open to the things that they had to tell you? Did they have influence in your life? No, it was really hard for you to listen to them because to you, it was just a lot of just this. So what do we do? We declare God as our father. And then he says this. He says to say this next. He says, and hallowed be your name. Now, the word hallowed is simply means uh, it's like holy, that he is separate, that he knows more than us, that he is, he's created this universe, he's put all the planets in place, he's put all the stars where they need to be, he's created all the galaxy, and the reason why to understand that is so important is what comes next in the prayer. And it's our next letter, it's, it's surrender. Because Jesus says this, he says, he says, God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're told to surrender and I think right here, this is probably one of the most skipped portions of the Lord's Prayer. At least for me it is. This is the one I probably tend to gloss over the most, where it's like, or I pray, you know, like, hey God, thanks for this day, you're good. I need some stuff from you. But surrender is a stopping where we say, God, it's your will in my life. Not my will, it's your will. It's your kingdom come, not my kingdom come. Now why is this so hard? Because you and I, we all have our own kingdoms here on this earth, don't we? We're we're thinking like, okay, come on, come on, God. You've seen my kids. You've seen my marriage. You've seen my finances. You've seen my business. I need help here. Or like, haven't you noticed that I'm still single? Like, are you not seeing this? What about that girl over there? Hint, hint. Or God, like, look at my marriage. Would you please fix her? And I think in these moments here, God's like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
I already know what you need. Did you know that God already knows what you need before you ask him? And the reason why we know that is just before he gives his disciples this prayer, he says this. He says, your father knows what you need before you ask him. To which we go, okay, well, what's the point of praying then? Like, what's the point of asking for God for things if we already know what we're going to ask for? Well, let me ask you as a parent here. Even though you know your child's needs and you know their desires, don't you still love it when they come and talk to you about these things? And they tell you these things? Or maybe when they come and talk to you, uh, they have this need that's going to be filled and you know it's not going to work for them? Like we have three boys at home and every day, multiple times a day, it's just like, Mom, Dad, I'm hungry. Do you have any candy or chips? And we're like, I'm like, and we're like no, 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 that's not going to satisfy you. That's not what you need. Or, or coming up, we're coming up to, uh, when we come closer to Christmas time, my son Ryder, he'll tell us starting in September every single day what he wants for Christmas. And we love that too. But, and then we get our other son, Mac, where we're getting really close to Christmas. We're like, Mac, what do you want for Christmas? And he's just like, I don't know. And we're like, man, we want you to come tell us. Tell us what you want. And Janie and I love blessing them with, with, with things that they ask for and then giving them bonus things. We love doing that. And I think that's just a small analogy how God sees us. God, he treats us the same way that he wants us to ask. It says in Scripture that every good and perfect gift comes from, from, from your heavenly Father who wants good things from us, who wants to give us good gifts, and he wants us to bring our requests to him. But Jesus is saying, hey, the first thing, before you need to do that, he says you need to surrender. Surrender your will to his. Why? And I'll say it again here, because prayer isn't about asking God to do our will. It's about God aligning us so we can do his. That's tough. That's hard for me to surrender to his will. But remember, prayer is designed to be a two-way street where it's not just us talking and asking for things and wanting things and needing help, but it's, but it's also a pausing where we can say, God, I want to listen to you. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you have to say. Man, and many of us in our culture right now, we don't do a lot of listening, do we? And, and we are bombarded with distractions, and, you know, like our phones being one of the bigger culprits right now. So it makes it really hard to listen to God. Or let me ask you, have you ever uh, prayed to God for, for something and he didn't answer your prayer, but later you're glad that he didn't? Or, you know, Garth Brooks has that line, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. And, you're, and you look back on your life, you're like, man, I'm so, I'm so glad that God didn't answer my prayer there because he was kind of a loser. And you didn't know it then, but God was protecting you. And it's one thing to be grateful for God for an un- unanswered prayer, but it's another thing to not get your prayers answered in other ways, especially when there are things that you think you really need and, and God's not answering your prayers on your timeline or your agenda. You know, I've had those questions where it's just like, God, what's going on here? It feels like you're not doing what you, I, want, I want you to do. Or I've gone through seasons where just my prayers just aren't getting answered the way, the way that I want them to. And looking back on those seasons, I, I realized... Man, during those seasons, there was just a time of incredible growth in my life, spiritual growth and just growing up. And, and during those seasons, I, I saw the, the incredible comfort and love from God through those seasons. And I, and I was so thankful during those seasons where I felt like I wasn't sure what to do here. I was so thankful that I knew enough to trust God enough because I can trust him anyway. Because I I, I really believe that his ways were higher than my ways when I can surrender to his will. And that verse in Romans chapter 8 became so evident in my life where it says this. It says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, his will, not my purposes. Where we can say, God, it's not my will, it's not my plans. It's not my agenda, whether you heal me or not. It's what you want. Because you work for the good to those who love you. I can testify to that. And do you know what surrender is? This is what surrender is. God, the answer is yes, before I even know what you'll say. That's what surrender really is. So let me ask you, are you surrendered to a God who knows best, whose ways are higher than your ways? 
Because if you're not, it's going to be really hard for you to hear his voice. It's going to be really hard to hear from God when you have your own agenda in your life. So Jesus says, you surrender to his will over yours. So he tells us to, we declare who God is. We surrender his will. Then Jesus says, ask. Ask for whatever you want. And what's interesting in this next couple of verses here, Jesus, he, he gives a few, he gives three examples. And he tells the disciples what he asks God for. And the first one is this. He says, give us today our daily bread. In other words, he, he doesn't say, give us our annual bread, provide for for us today. Lauren just mentioned this before, when leading into that song, that picture from Malawi, where they, 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 have no, they have no other choice, but it's like God provide for today. In other words, don't, what Jesus is saying here is, is, he's saying, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't be anxious about tomorrow, but just provide for today. And then, and then he tells them, he says, God, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors where I know there's something in my life, I know there's things in my life where I need to ask God for forgiveness for, as well as I need to forgive the people that have hurt me. As in, as in okay, God's forgiven me. Now why shouldn't I forgive the people who have hurt me as well? And then he says this, he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Where I know I have things in this world that are going to tempt me, and I know that there's, there's an enemy and Satan is, is trying to come after me. He's trying to destroy our relationships. He's trying, to, he's trying to destroy this church. He's trying to erode my marriage and everything else that's, that's good in my life, where we can say, God, go before me. Go before me and deliver me from these evil things. This is what Jesus told his disciples to pray for. And right here, this framework, this is how Jesus teaches us to pray. He says, first, declare who God is, and then surrender your will. Then ask for what you need. Now, when you look at these three things right here, let me ask you, which one is likely missing from your prayer life? I think for me, this one right here. Where it's easy for me to declare who God is. It's even easier for, for me to ask God for things. So I'm also a fellow struggler here. It's hard for me to surrender my will and my kingdom to God. But oh, when I get this right, wow, I look back on my life and wow, does God have good things for me. Is it an easy life? No. But it's a life that's led by my heavenly Father. Because I know I'm not smart enough to call the shots. And when you can move in a direction like this, and you will see, you'll be able to see the wonderful journey that God wants to take you on as you make yourself available to hear and listen to where God wants to take you. So my challenge for you today is to pray how Jesus taught us in this framework right here. In your own words. You don't need to say anything fancy. You don't need any holy, fancy words, but use your own words. Remember, prayer is a conversation between you and God. Because remember, prayer isn't about asking God to do our will. It's about God aligning us so we can do his. Because that's ultimately the path that you want to be on. And that's where you want to be. I'm going to pray right away. And then um, we're going to invite you to, to join the band as, as we sing a song together. And it's a song that we've been singing here for quite a few years called Sovereign. And this talks just about that, it talks exactly about that where God, where we can say, God, you are sovereign. You are the king of my life. You are the Lord of my life. And my favorite line in the song, I think that I've been using these last few years, is, it says, um, God, whatever comes my way, I'm gonna trust you. So I'm gonna pray and then we'll sing together. Join me as we pray. Oh man, um, Father, and we don't even wanna gloss over that word. You're our heavenly Father. You are good. You know better than us. You are holy, and we are, we're not. <laughs> Thank you for giving us a, a model to talk to you. And we want to try to surrender what we want to what you want. Because it's about your kingdom, not ours. We want to get to a place where we can say yes even before we know what you're going to say. And just like you taught us what to ask for, deliver us from the things that are going to hurt our lives, protect us, protect our marriages here. And direct us just to be great parents. Deliver me, deliver us from this evil in the world and, and for all of us here, God. I know that many of us just need to hear from you and I pray that we all begin praying, declaring who you are and surrendering our ways to yours. 
than asking just in order to hear your voice so much better. In your name we pray. Amen. today as you leave today that you will go this week and make yourself available God to make yourself available to a perfect heavenly father through the storms through the calms you guys have a great week enjoy the sunshine we'll see you back next Sunday for part two Take care.